We have uh, The Apocalypse of Thomas as part of the Apocrypha. It was not written by the Apostle Thomas. Uh, it was written much later, 300 to 400 AD is uh, speculated. Uh, different fragments were found and they were placed together to make the copy I have. The translation is not perfect, so take it with a grain of salt. It has only six chapters, so it's not that long. So let's get into it. The Apocalypse of Thomas, chapter 1. This begins the letter of uh, or from the Lord to Thomas. Hear about the things that must happen in the last times. The world will be shared between kings. Then after that, when the hour of the end draws near, there will be seven days of great signs in heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be moved. There will be famine, war, and earthquakes in various places snow, ice, and tremendous drought. There will be many open conflicts among the peoples, blasphemy, unrighteousness, envy, evil, laziness, pride, and excess, and everyone will speak in the manner that he wishes. And my priests will fight among themselves and will sacrifice to me with minds of deceit. Because of this I will not look upon them, the priests will see the people forsaking the house of the Lord and turning to the world. They will venture into restricted places in the house of God, and they will claim many things and places for themselves that were lost, and those things and places will become subject to Caesar in the way they were given before as poll taxes in the cities as it is with gold and silver. And the chief men of the cities will be condemned, and their possessions will be brought to the treasury of the kings, and it will be filled. There will be disturbances throughout all the people, and there will be death. The house of the Lord will be forsaken, and their altars will be despised, so that spiders weave their webs on them. The place of holiness will be dishonored and violated, the priesthood contaminated, distress will increase, and righteousness will be overcome. Happiness will die, and gladness will live. In those days, evil will abound. People will cater to those of status and wealth. Hymns will stop coming from the house of the Lord. Truth will cease. Greed will abound among the priests. No upright man nor an upright priesthood will be found. Chapter 2 Near the last days, the king will arise. He will be a lover of the law who will not hold office for long, but he will leave two sons. The first is named with the first letter A, the second with the eighth letter H. The first will die before the second. After this, two princes will arise to oppress the nations. Under their hands, a very great famine will occur. The famine will take place in the right-hand section of the east, and that nation will rise up against another nation and be driven out from their own borders. Again another king will arise. He will be a deceitful man. He will order a golden image of Caesar to be made, set up and worshipped in the house of God. Martyrdoms will be widespread. Then the faith will return to the servants of the Lord, and holiness will greatly increase. But so will distress and pain increase. The mountains will be comforted, and will comfort them, and will drop down the sweetness of fire from its face, so that the number of stained saints may be completed. After a little space of time, a king will arise out of the east. He will be a lover of the law. He will cause all good and necessary things to be in supply within the house of the Lord. He will show mercy to the wind widows and the needy. He will order that a royal gift to be given to the priests. In his days there will be abundance of all things. After that a king will arise, this time in the southern section of the world, and will rule for only a short time. In his days the economy will go bankrupt because of the wages of the Roman soldiers, and he will order the substance of all the other citizens to be taken and given to the king so it could be distributed. Chapter 3 After that, there will be plenty of corn and wine and oil, 
but a tremendous lack of money, so that it would be to take the substances of gold and silver to buy corn, and there will be tremendous hunger. At that time, the sea level will rise greatly, and communications will be cut off from men to men. The things, princes, and the captains of the earth will be nervous, and no man will speak freely. Gray hairs will be seen upon boys, and the young man will not respect or listen to the elderly. After that will arise another king, a deceitful man who will rule for a short time. In his days there will be all manner of evils. There will be genocide of the race of men living in the east to Babylon. Famine and death by the sword will follow from Canaan to Rome. Then all the springs of water and all the wells will dry up and be turned into dust and blood. Chapter 4 The heaven will be moved and the stars will fall upon the earth. The sun will be cut in half like the moon, and the moon will not give light. There will be great signs and wonders in those days when Antichrist draws near. These are the signs for those that live on the earth. In those days, the pains of great and hard work like those of a woman in labor will come upon them. Woe to them that build, because they will not live in their buildings. Woe to them that plow the ground, because their labor is for no result. Woe to them that marry, because they will bring forth sons in the famine. Woe to them that join house to house or field to field, because all things will be consumed with fire. Woe to them that are not introspective, while time allows, because after this they will be condemned forever. Woe to them that turn away from the poor when he asks for help. You will know that I am the Father Most High, and I am the Father of all spirits. As you will see, this is the beginning of the latter age, or the end. Chapter 5 These are the seven signs of the ending of this world. There will be, in all the earth, famine and tremendous disease, and sickness of vast proportions. All nations will take captives, and men will fall by the edge of the sword. The beginning of the days of judgment will make you wonder greatly. At the third hour, the Jewish day starts around 6 p.m., of the first day, there will be a loud and powerful voice in the firmament of heaven, and a large cloud of blood will come down out of north, and loud thunder and powerful lightning will follow the cloud. Blood will rain down on all the earth. These are the signs of the first day. And on the second day, there will be a loud voice in the firmament of heaven, and the earth will be moved out of its place, and the portals of the eastern part of heaven will be, and a great power will be sent forth, as if it were belched by the portals of heaven themselves, and the power will cover all the heaven, even until evening, and there will be fear and trembling in the world. These are the signs of the second day. In the third day, at about the second hour, there will be a voice in heaven, and the vast depths of the earth will sound their voices from the four corners of the earth. The first heaven will be rolled up like a scroll, and will vanish quickly in an instant. Smoke and stench of the brimstone in the chasms will darken the day until the tenth hour. Then all men will say, I think the end draws near, that we will die. These are the signs of the third day. And on the fourth day, at the first hour, the eastern section of the earth will sound, the abyss will roar and all the earth will be moved by a strong earthquake. In that day, all the idols of the hidden will fall along with all the buildings on earth. These are the signs of the fourth day. And on the fifth day, at the sixth hour, the thunder will be loud and sudden in the sky, and the stars and the sphere of the sun will be snatched away, and there will be total darkness over the world until evening, and the stars will be sent off their course. In that day, all nations will hate the world, and all men will despise his life on this planet. These are the signs of the fifth day. On the sixth day, there will be signs in heaven. At the fourth hour, the firmament of heaven will be split from east to west, 
and the angels of the heavens will be looking out on the earth, and they will open the heavens. And all men will see the host of angels above the earth looking out of heaven. Then all men will flee. All men will flee to the mountains and hide themselves from the face of the righteous angels and will say, I wish the earth would open and swallow us. These things will happen like this world has never seen since it was created. Then they will see me, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, coming from above in the light of my Father with the power and honor of the holy angels. At my coming, the fires that bordered the paradise will be removed because paradise is encompassed with fire. And this is a perpetual fire that will consume the earth and all the elements of the world. Then they will be clothed and be carried by the hand of the holy angels as I have told you before. They will be lifted up in the air on a cloud of light and will go with me into heaven rejoicing. They will continue in the light and on the honor of my father. They will there will be gladness abounding with my Father and before the holy angels. These are the signs of the sixth day. The last chapter, chapter 6. Then will the spirits and souls of all men come out of paradise and will come on all the earth, and every one of them will go to his own body where it is laid up, and every one of them will say, My body lies here. And when the loud voices of those spirits will be heard, like a huge earthquake, there will be a large earthquake all over the world. The mountains will be split in two from above and the rocks from beneath. Then every spirit will return into his own vessel and the bodies of the saints who have died will rise. Then will their bodies be changed into the image and likeness and the honor of the holy angels and into the power of the image of my holy father. Then will they be clothed with garments of life eternal made from the cloud of light which has never been seen in this world because that cloud came down at the out of the highest realm of the heaven from the power of my father and that cloud will contain the beauty of all the spirits that have believed in me and on the seventh day at the eighth hour there will be voices in the four corners of the heaven and all the air will be shaken and filled with holy angels, and they will make war among the heathen all day long. And in that day, my elect will be sought out by the holy angels and saved from the destruction of the world. Then all men will see that the hour of their destruction draws near. These are the signs of the seventh day. And when the seven days are passed by, on the eighth day, at the sixth hour, there will be a sweet and tender voice in heaven from the east. Then that angel will be revealed, which has power over all the holy angels. And all the angels will go out with him, who is sitting upon a chariot made of the clouds of my holy father. And they will rejoice, running upon the air beneath the heaven, to deliver the elect that have believed in me. And they will rejoice that the destruction of this world has come. Thomas... You must hear, because I am the Son of God, the Father, and I am the Father of all spirits. You must hear my signs that will come to pass at the end of this world. The end of the world will come, and the world will pass away before my elect depart out of the world. I will tell you openly what will come. But when these things will come to pass, even the princes of the angels do not know. It is now hidden from their sight as to what they the end will come. The words of the Savior to Thomas are ended concerning the end of this world.